What's going on? Live and direct on the air. What's going on, family? Praying and hoping everybody's well, everybody's safe. Blessings to everybody. Salute. What's going on? Please subscribe. It's free. On YouTube, live and direct on the air. Instagram, live and direct on the air. The button is free. Like, comment. Let me know what's going on. You know what I'm saying? And uh, once again, I appreciate you su your support, man. You know, everybody supporting the live and direct uh, uh, clothing wear. You know, uh, everything that I do. For those that don't know what I do, I went into prison for a crime I didn't commit. And uh, I promised that if I fought my way out and got myself out, I was going to help others. And I was going to be in a position to help others and, and get the connections, you know, uh, uh, around me to be able to help me to help others left back in the prisons or uh, wrongfully convicted or even the, the brothers and sisters that are in there for crimes that they did to help them out with food, with packages, with whatever phone calls because, you know, I know what it is to be in, inside and have nothing, have nobody. You know, a lot of people that, that know my situation, they know, you know, what I'm talking about when you have nobody behind the wall, nobody to call, uh, no food, no money, and, and such and such. So, you know, I, I said that once I came out, I was going to make a difference on it and I was going to help my people behind. Freedom is a must. So, you know, what I do is, you know, I, I, if the person is wrongfully convicted, I take their documents, I, I, I make uh, thousands of transcripts, copies of the transcripts, and uh, I go fishing from lawyer to lawyer until I have a lawyer that uh, accepts the case. That will take the case pro bono and as we know in these days man it's hard to get lawyers right now because a lot of lawyers don't want don't want to take pro bono cases because they feel that they lost money in making copies and going back and forth and and paying investigators and stuff like that and i think that it's wrong that you know they don't want to take pro bono cases because of those reasons, man, when a person sits in jail, wrongfully convicted or for whatever reason, you know what I'm saying? There should still be a lot of pro bono attorneys that help brothers and sisters in the prisons with whatever situation they may be. And so what I do, I just go from spot to spot, man. And, you know, I don't want to say I put pressure, but I just go to these lawyers and say, listen, man, these guys are here going to die in prison for crimes that they never committed. I need you guys to look through the papers. If you feel that you don't want to take the case, even though you see that there's pointers and stuff in there, Call me, I pick up the papers, I take it to a next attorney. And that's what I do until I'm able, thank God, to be able to bless these brothers with attorneys to help them out. So that's what I do. Besides that, I allow brothers to call, you know, call one of my lines to vent, you know, when when when, 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 when they troubled on Sunday, what they call me at whatever time, you know what I'm saying? Uh, we send packages to the ones that we can send, uh, parole clothes to those coming out. You know, we try to have the best that I can, you know what I'm saying, again, I'm only doing what I wish somebody else had done for me, and, you know, I promise, and the many that know me that came out, that I helped out, they know that I kept my word, I kept it real, and that, you know, my promise was to come out here and do what I gotta do, and to, you know, to do what nobody did for me, so, you know, I wanna get on this topic right now, which is a different topic right now, but I just wanted to let you, you know, a little run about, you know, what I do exactly at Live and I Reckon on the air and uh, and stuff like that. I also do parole letters. I do visits into the prisons. I make phone calls when brothers and sisters are calling about being harassed by correction officers and stuff like that. I make calls. I you know I get together with my team and we all call up there to make noise to let them know that this person is not alone. That you know we with them. You know what I'm saying? So I'm working on a new project right now. It's actually a bigger pro project than uh, than I thought. You know, so far I have helped five people get exonerated, hundreds of people to come out on parole, uh, other people's on reversals of time, 75 years to 25 years, and stuff like that. And uh, you know, like I said, I do anything to help my people and free my people out of prison. But I want to speak about this topic, right? And soon you'll see who I'm speaking about and who I want to help. And there's two individuals, by the way, that I want to help. And I'm hoping that other people, you know, would, 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 would combine with me to help these two individuals that I think need the help. Sammy the Bull killed five, uh, 13 people, sorry, that he admitted to 
13 people he killed that he admitted to did only five years in prison for telling, telling on John Gotti because he became he became a rat. But he admitted to 13 people that he killed. Five years in jail. The government ain't care what the family of those uh, murdered victims, you know, they ain't care about them. They ain't care about the family that, you know, that they suffered about, they, you know, of their loss. Now, I want to jump to Luis Felipe, a.k.a. King Blood. He's never, and I'm, well, I'm not going to say never because he went to jail prior to a long time ago to, to the case now for a manslaughter. Let's just forget about that right now. Felipe was sentenced to life in prison in 45 years of confinement for murders that he ordered through the phone that he never actually did with his hands that he ordered on the phone. Other people did the work and actually committed these murders. These other people that committed these murders did 25, 30 years. They're actually home right now. Felipe King Blood, who actually did not have hands in those murders, but because supposedly he ordered them to phones or whatever, he's got natural life, 45, natural life plus 45 years, you know, to do in confinement. And I'm just trying to figure this out. Like, what the fuck? Like, this dude didn't even commit these murders. And he's in there. The people that actually committed the murders did their time became out. Why is he still in solitary confinement for 45 years? Why, okay, if he can't come out, why is he, isn't he released from this confinement, man? From the solitary. To come out into the general population at least, man. To live his life. You know what I'm saying? The rest of the life that he got left, man. No, they want to keep him 45 years in solitary confinement. Then after that, natural life in prison into the population. If after those 45 years, they're going to put him back in the population. But again, Sammy the Bull admitted to 13 bodies, which I know there's more. Did five years in prison testify against Gotti. King Blood never testified on anybody. Never killed anybody with his hands. And he's given natural life and 45 years in, in uh, solitary confinement for something that in reality he didn't do. Is that fair? I don't think that that's fair, man. I think that we should fight for change. You know, if he can't come out, no problem. But let him come out from that 45 years of solitary confinement, be in the population, and be able to live the rest of his life, man. You know, who wants to want to die in prison, first of all, who want to die in solitary confinement? You know, the age that he's going to be by the time he come out of solitary confinement, it's, it's going to be crazy. It's going to be in his 80s, 86, whatever. You know? So this is a, a, a task that I'm taking up. I'm going to get together with some attorneys, some other people, to see if I can take, you know, what part we can uh, get together on on uh, helping Luis Felipe, a.k.a. Keen Blood. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I know him personally. I've talked to him, been with him, you know, I know him personally. I got pictures he signed for me. And, and you know, I got the, 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 the special name that he used to call me and stuff like that. I know him. I, 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 you know, I, I'm not talking about somebody I don't know. I know him personally. You know what I'm saying? I talked to him in the phone many times and all that stuff in the past, you know? So that's my one project. And before I say about the next project, let me say that when Felipe started what he started, man, King Blood, it was for the oppression of our peoples, man. A lot of people was abusing the peoples, man. And they felt that they needed to get together to help the people that were being oppressed by other people, by other human beings, man. You get what I'm saying? Because that's what we do. We oppress each other. And, and because he started his own thing to stop the oppression, this is what he got to pay. He got he to pay for this, man. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, we need change. We got to change that. Second is Nelson uh, 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 Nelson Millet, the godfather of the kings in uh, the state of Connecticut. 